With the first round of roster cuts on the way around the NFL, here are five potential cuts the New Orleans Saints could make before Tuesday's 4 p.m. Eastern time deadline. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints, your team every day. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome into another episode of Locked on Saints, your daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much as always. Make Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that we're free and available on all podcast apps and on YouTube as well. And I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, your New Orleans Saints expert credentialed member of the media. You can find me over at CrescentCitySports.com. Uh, USA Today's Saints Wire, Tuesdays on Locked on NFL, and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked on Saints. And today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online, who have you covered with more odds, lines, and props than ever before. It's Bet Online where the game starts. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at some players that you should be watching with joint practices on the way tomorrow on Tuesday. We'll discuss linebacker depth. Is it actually better than we expected? But first, five potential cut candidates ahead of. The Tuesday, uh, August, yes, August 16th at 4 p.m. Eastern time deadline. All rosters around the NFL must be cut from 90 to 85 by that time. So who are a couple of candidates to watch that could potentially end up cut, at least for now, from the New Orleans Saints roster? Now, I it, it is merely uh, symmetry, right, that we're talking about five cuts that can be made and five potential players that could be cut. But these are not my predictions of five players that will be cut, just simply five players to keep an eye out on, and some, you know, I think some intriguing reasons for them. So let's start off with uh, number one here, uh, Vincent Gray. Vincent Gray struggled in his preseason game. He struggled in OTAs. He ended up getting into a fight at one point, a little bit of a back and forth with Jarvis Landry during that time. It was either OTAs or one of the mini camps. And then he struggled a bit during camp as well. He's kind of the last remaining out of, well, not really. I was going to say he's kind of the last remaining uh, future reserve deal, but that was Dylan Maven. So at this point, Vincent Gray is kind of on the outs a little bit in terms of what he's been able to show you on the field so far. He's had some good moments during camp, particularly in one-on-ones. He's got a couple of wins there, but for the most part, he struggled. Now, the Saints don't have a lot of depth when it comes to uh, corner at uh, or really defensive back at the moment. So that could end up impacting this team's decision in terms of keeping a guy like Vincent Gray around to make sure that they're getting the reps that they need. But with all teams having to cut down to 85, if you needed to trim the fat somewhere, there's at least enough there that you would be okay. Uh, Vincent Gray just simply did not have the preseason performance that he needed, and that might end up impacting him going into these roster cuts Tuesday afternoon. Next up on the list, I've got safety Jack Kerner. Now, Jack Kerner didn't do anything wrong. He didn't play poorly. He barely played. In fact, it's just simply a last man in, first man out kind of a situation. You could also maybe even throw TJ Carter into this conversation. Has nothing to do with them performing poorly. Has nothing to do with them not showing you something or anything like that. It's that you got to make five cuts. And are you going to make those five cuts to the players that you have seen the most from or seen the least from? That could be a way that this ends up going. The Saints could make cuts based upon players that underperform. But they also could make cuts based on players that they just haven't seen enough of yet and need to make roster room for or we need to make roster room because of. So that could be an easy way for the Saints to go. And again. Just like we saw with Jack Kerner at OTAs, minicamps, things like that, just because you get cut at this point in the preseason doesn't mean that you don't get an opportunity to come back, especially if they start to thin at any of these positions as well. Next, we'll go to another um, another player that was recently added, KJ Costello. And again, has nothing to do with him either doing really well or doing very poorly or anything like that. The guy basically had one practice in the building wearing number 19, uh, literally the only number left that he could have claimed off of the roster at this point. Uh, But if Jameis Winston is back at the beginning of this week, does that mean that the Saints don't feel the need to carry a fourth quarterback for a little while? And then they end up moving on from KJ Costello. And then if they decide that they need to bring him back at a later time, then they can. I mean, there's just an easy way to sort of make a roster spot there, because if you're only wanting to carry three quarterbacks at a time, knowing that that fourth quarterback, as Dennis Allen observed in his in one of his recent pressers, isn't going to get a lot of opportunity, particularly in the particularly in the preseason, 
then it just goes to show you that there's not really a reason to keep that fourth quarterback on the roster. So that one all kind of depends upon the health of Jameis Winston and how much, how quickly he can get back out onto the field and how much he's able to do. Maybe he can get back out on the field during joint practices, but he doesn't necessarily play in the preseason game, but they don't want Andy Dalton and Ian Book taking the entire preseason game and getting all those reps. So then they keep KJ, KJ Costello around or even so much as potentially bring him back after a certain point, right? Before the final preseason game, for instance. So lots of opportunity there for KJ Costello should the Saints decide that they need somebody else to kind of take the reps off of these quarterbacks. But if not, he could be on the way out, at least temporarily. Next up, I'll go with tight end Chris Herndon. Chris Herndon is another one that's just kind of a recent man in, first man out. This one kind of depends upon the health of Taysom Hill. Do we see Taysom Hill getting back involved in that tight end room and not having the non-contact jersey on and all of that going into the joint practices against the Packers? And if so, then you're no longer thin at the tight end room. And so maybe you end up moving on from a guy like Chris Herndon or maybe even moving on from a guy like J.P. Holtz. But what J.P. Holtz brings you as a pass blocker and a run blocker, particularly as somebody that's also kind of in competition at fullback in a way as an H-back guy, then... I think it makes a lot of sense that maybe Chris Herndon could be the guy on the way out. And I'm very excited about Chris Herndon. I think that he is a talented pass catcher and somebody that could bring an extra dimension in terms of what you see during practices, at least, to the position. So it would make a lot of sense to keep him around. But if Taysom Hill's back, then it could mean that there's just simply not room for a guy like Chris Herndon, who is a recent addition, uh, is still learning the system, and could just be one of those guys that ends up just like KJ Costello joining a little bit too late. And then finally, we'll go with offensive tackle Sage Doxter. Doxter is an undrafted free agent, so usually you get a little bit more um, opportunity uh, within the room here. But Doxter has simply struggled. Uh, we've seen the struggles for 79 during the preseason game. We, he, he, let up, he let up one of three sacks in the game uh, that was credited to an offensive lineman. He let up uh, several pressures and sacks in training camps and pads and no pads, all of that. So and even, you know, those those contact practices and things like that that we're looking forward to, like the joint practices coming up. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we'll get to see him Tuesday morning before potentially those cuts are made Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday evening. So maybe he's able to show up a little bit more then and maybe save his spot. All of these guys would have their opportunity to do that. But as of right now, Doxeter, if there's any offensive lineman that I could see on the way out right now, it would unfortunately be him. And again, just because it means that they're cut right now doesn't mean that they don't come back at some point later on in the preseason as you know injuries set in or as they make decisions about other players as well. All right, coming up next, we're going to take a look at linebacker depth. Do you feel a little bit more comfortable now with Eric Wilson and Chase Hansen? I'll tell you why you should as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. So we get to have these wonderful conversations every Monday through Friday. Thanks to our friends over at BetterHelp. The BetterHelp is Awesome. It's not a crisis line. It's not a self-help thing or anything like that. It is the therapy that you need that will end up assessing all the needs that you have and then making sure to provide you with the appropriate match to get all of those things addressed so that you have the right person to talk to, not just someone to talk to. And I think that's a really big delineation. And one of the things that I love about BetterHelp is their attention to making sure that you find the right fit. They do that by having you do that personal assessment on the website. Then they end up matching you up with somebody. But then if that match doesn't work, you're able to change at no charge to a different match. So it's really cool. It's awesome. And you can book up to weekly uh, schedule, weekly sessions on video or even the phone. If you don't want to be like on video, you don't want to show your face, all that. You can do it all from the comfort of your home where you know you're comfortable. Everything just kind of allows you to open up a little bit more and get the help that you're looking for. So many people are already using BetterHelp that they're actually recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. So get in while you can and to make sure that you enjoy it and make sure that you get a little bit extra here, a little bit of land yap, as we like to say. We're going to be offering uh, to our listeners here 10% off for your first month by going to betterhelp.com slash locked on. That's 10% off of your first month of online therapy at betterhelp.com slash locked on. All right, family, continuing on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. Thanks again for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. We're going to be back to two a days starting tomorrow on Tuesday. We'll get our live show over on the Locked on Saints YouTube page, which will also be posted for video and audio listeners later as well. Just in case you can't catch the live show, you don't have to miss out. It'll still be posted up for you. So we'll get to those after each of the joint practices on Tuesday and Wednesday. 
traveling Thursday morning. So Thursday's episode might come out a little bit later on in the afternoon, kind of recapping those joint practices. If I can, I'll get it done Wednesday night before uh, I fly out, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And then, of course, we get right back to some preseason action on Friday. So busy week here at Locked on Saints, and I appreciate you so much for making me a part of your day each and every one of those days. So as we look ahead now, one of the big questions that we should revisit in the midst is uh, linebacker depth. Do you feel better about the New Orleans Saints linebacker depth? I think you are justified in doing so. I really do. Um, after you saw the performances of Eric Wilson and Chase Hansen in their first preseason game, now again, like we're not making final statements here, right? There's, there's a lot left to happen. Two joint practices, more training camp practices, right? Leading up to those games, two more preseason games. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen between now and then. But as of right now, I tend to think that maybe the Saints are in a little bit of a better position than I thought that they were last week. Now, next week, I might be confirmed in my you know, sort of beliefs last week, right? So these things can all shift and change. But when you look at Eric Wilson all over the field, Eric Wilson uh, affecting the catch point, great coverage out of the backfield, all of that, um, making a break on the ball that ended up getting tipped up by uh, the pass to Damian Pierce that got intercepted by Chase Hanson and Chase Hanson making some moves all the way down the field on the big return as well. You also saw Chase Hansen with another pass defense. Saw him with two tackles for a loss, including the first play of the game. I mean, this was this guy is showing you exactly why it is that the New Orleans Saints bring him back so much. And I think that Eric Wilson has also shown you why the New Orleans Saints invested in him this offseason in terms of his ability as a veteran linebacker, really the only veteran linebacker in the room behind Demario Davis. So I think right now you look at the two of them And then you look at the open spot in terms of depth. If you're keeping six linebackers, five spots are already claimed. They seem to be in pretty good hands. Demario Davis, Caden Ellis on the strong side, Pete Warner on the weak side, of course. And then you have Hanson and Wilson that have played very well so far all throughout camp and the preseason game, right? It's not just the preseason game. Like Dennis Allen said, preseason games are important. You want to see results in live action for sure. But we've also seen results all throughout practice all throughout training camp as well, coming from those two players. So then who ends up with the sixth spot if they're keeping six linebackers? There are a couple of options. Andrew Dowell, number 50, a team favorite. They really like him. Zach Bon, somebody that they also really liked, invested in in the draft. He's been out with injury over the course of the past week or so. So how does that end up impacting his opportunity to be able to get out on the field and potentially take a roster spot or, or even hold on to a roster spot at this point? Is he already one of those veteran bubble guys before you even feel like you can call him a veteran in the NFL because he hasn't been able to get out on the field very much as the Saints have changed his role? Remember, Zach Bond's kind of in a little bit of a tricky situation, and I don't really think you can look at Zach Bond and say he's a bad player or anything like that. I certainly wouldn't. But I think you can say that he's had some struggles in terms of translating into the new role that he was asked to play once he was drafted to the New Orleans Saints. The guy was a speed rusher at Wisconsin and a really effective one. And then the Saints drafted him and they wanted to move him to off-ball linebacker. That transition has not been easy. That transition was never going to be easy. There's no reason to expect it to be easy. And so I think at this next level, Zach Bond is somebody that if he, you can produce as a pass rusher a little bit more, then maybe he becomes a trade asset for you. When you have to make these cuts on the on the roster, particularly when you have to get down to 53, and then you end up making a move that sends him to a system that benefits him a little bit more, utilizes him in a way that he can be most impactful, and it returns the New Orleans Saints a day three selection in the draft. Not a bad get. Not a bad get. If you're trading somebody that's effectively going to be a premier position in another team and in another scheme. Sorry for the rhyme. No, I'm not. I love rhyming. So Andrew Dahl, Zach Bond, those are candidates, but there's other ways you can go with Zach Bond. Nephi Sewell, the, uh, the, the brother of Panay Sewell, who is the starting left tackle now for the, um, for the Detroit Lions. He had a nice moment. He's had some nice moments in camp too, but he's got a long way to go, right? Just in terms of a, a, not really a long way to go. He's got a longer kind of road, right? He's got an uphill battle, especially with Andrew Dowell up ahead and Zach Vaughn up ahead. Same thing for Isaiah Pryor. Isaiah Pryor's had some nice moments. He's had some not so great moments. He's sort of been what you expect up and down, right? Much like Sewell. And so those guys have a little bit more of an uphill battle, but hey, maybe special teams ends up impacting what those decisions are. But if special teams ends up impacting those decisions, then I think Andrew Dowell ends up becoming your guy. Now that's all assuming that they end up making the decision based upon the rest of that linebacker room, based on the players that are already in the building, they could potentially go outside the building as well and still look to bring in another veteran somewhere. But as of right now, I don't know that there's really a reason to hit the panic button 
until we know more about Pete Werner's injury. That's when I think you then have to go to the market and you end up having to find another sort of guy there. But hey, if Chase Hans is able to play a little bit of will for you and it gives you what you need during the rest of the preseason while Pete Werner gets ready for week one, week one, not a bad situation to be in at all. All right, y'all, coming up, we're going to take a look at five players that you need to have an eye out for all throughout joint practices against the Green Bay Packers, including, of course, quarterback Jameis Winston. We'll have that coming up for you as you continue on to wrap up today's episode of Locked on Saints. So speaking of Jameis Winston, you might want to go ahead and get in on those comeback player of the year odds if you're feeling really confident about his season going into 2022. And the best place to do that is with our friends over at Bet Online, your number one source for all your sports wagering information, podcasts, articles, odds, lines, props. They got more of them than ever before over at Bet Online, which you can visit on your mobile device, laptop, desktop, whatever you want to use. They're awesome. They have a ton in terms of end of year awards. Game spreads for the regular season are already up. Lines for win totals, alternate lines for those win totals as well, in case you want to tease up or down a game. Uh, and that's not just for the New Orleans Saints. That's across the entire NFL. We've also got a bunch for you, too, in terms of NHL, MLB, NBA, eSports, golf, combat sports. They have everything that you could imagine and more over at Bet Online, where the game starts. Let's get it, Huda Nation. Wrapping up today's episode of Locked on Saints with five players that you should be watching for throughout joint practices. And, of course, we're going to start off with quarterback. Jameis Winston. Nice and easy. Jameis Winston uh, is somebody that you want to keep an eye out on just as if he ends up back on the field, right? He's been dealing with that uh, that foot injury, that sort of sprained right foot, as it's being called, injury, and wasn't at practice at all last week. Uh, did not participate in the preseason game, which was not a surprise. I would have been surprised if he were pr- participated in the preseason game as a whole, period, even if he was healthy all throughout the week. But now going into the second game and joint practices, this is a real good time to sort of see where Jameis Winston is, not only in his recovery process, but just as a passer going up against unfamiliar opponents. So great to see that he had a good time against that uh, Green Bay Packers defense last year. Maybe he ends up being able to show some of that this year again during those joint practices on Tuesday and Wednesday. Maybe we don't see him Friday in the preseason game. I'm sort of putting together like my list of like bubble wrap boys. And he could definitely be one of those guys that you just shelf in terms of games until the regular season. Another guy that I think would fall into the bubble wrap guys uh, sort of conversation is wide receiver Michael Thomas. It was going to be a lot of fun to watch over the course of joint practices going up against unfamiliar opponents, which is really the thing to highlight out of all this. But he's dominated so far in one on ones and seven on sevens and full team drills. He's been absolutely outstanding. Now you get to see him against different opponents, a different scheme, a team that does something a little bit differently, players that play a little bit differently. And what you'd love to see is him up against Shire Alexander and to be able to see, okay, he's been able to take on the Saints' best corner in camp so far in Paulson Adebo. What's it like to go up against the other team's best corner in terms of team? We haven't really gotten to see Marshawn Lattimore and Michael Thomas go up against one another, which hopefully we'll get to see next week as they prepare for the Chargers. But Now we get an opportunity to see him go up against a number one corner in the NFL and see what he's able to show. Uh, A couple of guys in the trenches to keep an eye out on Trevor Penning, the rookie, of course, at left tackle. And of course, Peyton Turner, the second year uh, defensive end edge rusher kind of feels like a rookie season for him because we didn't really get to see him much with all the unfortunate injuries that he's had to deal with. But both of these guys have had flashes throughout camp and Trevor Penning didn't have the greatest performance during the preseason. I know Pro Football Focus graded him with like the highest grade out of all first round rookies or all rookies or something like that. But his performance was up and down. I mean, there were times where you could see exactly what it is that we've always talked about that he was going to struggle with, which was in the passing game. But then you saw exactly what we expected in terms of how well he was going to be able to produce in the run game. So you saw kind of the ups and downs of Trevor Pinning throughout that. Now he gets to continue to continuously build on that again, with unfamiliar faces that do things a little bit differently. He spoke with us last week and kind of mentioned that, right? Oh, I kind of know what Taco Charlton and Peyton Turner are going to do, so I'm excited to go up against some guys that aren't those guys. (laughs) Of course he is, (laughs) you know? So now you get an opportunity to really see that over the course of joint practices and then going into the game on Friday. Similarly with Peyton Turner, we just watched this guy flash over and over again during camp. We want to continue to see it. Didn't get to see much of it during uh, the Houston Texans game, but he did get a lot of snaps. They let him play and get a lot of reps all the way down to third team and stuff, which I don't think is a reflection of how they feel about Peyton Turner. I think that's just simply they wanted him to get reps. So he got, I think it was 24 snaps in the game with the most being 37. Then you kind of went down to like 33, 31, 27, and then Peyton Turner and a couple others at 24. 
So you got to see a lot of snaps. I think you'll see that again all throughout the joint practices and, of course, Friday again in the game. And finally, the guy that I am very, very much looking forward to seeing against the Green Bay Packers in joint practices is Paul Sanadibo. Paul Sanadibo, the second year guy, is going to go up against the you know, rookie in Romeo Dobbs, who's been absolutely lighting up Packers camp. Uh, if Christian Watson is healthy, then maybe you get to see a little bit of that too. But the matchup between Paul Sanadibo and Romeo Dobbs is going to be a ton of fun to watch. You're also going to get, you know, other good players that are over there as well. But I'm really looking forward to that matchup. And obviously, if Marshall and Lattimore is back, you're going to see some some Lattimore and Dobbs as well. But I can't wait to see a Debo and that wide receiver go at it over the course of the camp because they have both in their respective manners and in their respective camps been lighting it up. So to get to see the two of them go up against one another, that's kind of the similar feeling that I have about like Michael Thomas going up against that secondary in Green Bay as well. It's iron sharpens iron, but this time instead of it being on the same team, things are just a little bit different. And so you get a greater opportunity to take a look at what you're going to be seeing in the regular season. All right, let's get to today's land yap to wrap it all up. Today's land yap is simple. Don't worry about developing final thoughts right now. Okay, got it? (laughs) It's easy, right? Basically, Don't make final decisions about players right now. I know that we were just talking about potential cut candidates and things like that. That's only because there are five players that have to be trimmed off of every roster. Otherwise, it's all wait and see. So every player that didn't necessarily have a great preseason game one could come back and light it up in preseason game two, especially with the joint practices there and they get a little bit in rhythm with their opponent, all of that. So let's not make final decisions. Let's not make brash sort of takes and things like that around all of it. There's nothing here that's going to happen in the preseason that's worth a victory lap in the regular season. Simple right? There's no value. There's no sort of, um, uh, how do I say this? There's no sort of like victory lap to be taken about being right at this point in the preseason. It's okay. The thing right now is to allow everybody to get as much evaluation as possible. The biggest win for the New Orleans Saints coming out of the preseason game as a team was health. Didn't see any major injuries take place during the game, anything like that. That's the biggest win for the New Orleans Saints coming out of preseason game one. Nothing else. Now we get to continue to see the rest of the catalog and resume that has to be built before final decisions are made before the regular season begins. And you know what? Decisions made right before the regular season begins, those aren't really final either because contracts aren't guaranteed after week one. So you might see more roster movement even after the first game of the season. So there's no need to go out there and develop any type of final thoughts on anybody right now. You got a favorite player that you love. It's not over for them if they had a bad performance. It's not solidified for them if they had a great performance. There's time. There's time. And so we'll give it all of that time to these New Orleans Saints that are trying to fight for their jobs and fight for their dreams. Coming up tomorrow, first episode will be the live show after the joint practices between the New Orleans Saints and the Green Bay Packers, bringing you everything you need to know there, right there. First side view, bam, get to see it. So we're bringing that to you. We'll be coming out of the hotel room for that. So if the, so we'll try the live stream. If it's bad, like the Wi-Fi ain't great, then I might pre-record the next day's one and stuff like that. So just bear with me, but we'll give it a shot and we'll see how it all goes. And then of course, in the evening, we'll answer your questions from that live show. Appreciate you as always making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out the Locked on Fantasy Football podcast, Locked on Dynasty Football as well as your second listen of the day to help you get ready for your fantasy football seasons. I appreciate you so much for making me a part of your day, a part of your routine, saying yes to me and the show. As always, if you see me, say hi. And of course, for everything you need in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how your mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.